year and to start working on a book. That was sort of his private vacation time. Bevel went down uh, and saw him and told him that he had heard a voice telling him that he had to go to Vietnam. I went out to Jamaica to see him, and I asked him to take a position against the war and to speak at the mobilization at the United Nations on April the 15th. He agreed in order to sort of soften the blow of all of that. Uh, Andy Young and some more moderate guys said, well, what you need to do is set up a meeting to talk to the more preachers at Riverside. A, a, lot of, a lot of disparate signals hit Dr. King that the Vietnam War was becoming such a drag on the, on the goodwill of America. I speak as one who loves America through the leaders of our own nation. The great initiative in this war is ours. The initiative to stop it must be ours. When, when Martin led us into the, into opposition to the war in Vietnam, he expected and was aware that he received criticism from, from many, many quarters, including civil rights leadership. There were those who felt like, oh no, you, you don't dare, you know, that's, n that's not what we are about. And so he said something like this, what you must understand is ML, just what he called himself, is a preacher. And I have been called to preach the word, the good news. And that is what I must do. And don't let anybody make you think that God chose America as his divine messianic force to be a sort of policeman of the whole world. God has a way of standing before the nations with judgment, and it seems that I can hear God saying to America, you are too arrogant. If you don't change your ways, I will rise up and break the backbone of your power. And I'll place it in the hands of a nation that doesn't even know my name. Be still and know that I'm God. It seemed to me that the country was going through convulsions because of civil rights still ongoing and now the war and that every strand of tension of division led to Martin Luther King that he was at the center of dissidence and a nation divided against itself the promises of the great society have been shot down on the battlefield of Vietnam making the poor White and Negro bear the heaviest burdens both at the front and at home. The reaction of the press was the most damaging public reaction that he had from the white press. It was one of the few times when, when people felt that King was naive, that he had expected uh, the Vietnam War critics to take his criticism as uh, face value for being heartfelt and for, and for what he was really trying to say. Most people said, you don't have any business talking about this, stick to civil rights. My objection is what Dr. King has done, and as I said, I don't question his motives, I question his judgment, in that in tying the Vietnam War into the civil rights movement that he is doing irreparable harm to the civil rights movement. He is losing thousands and thousands of allies. Others can do what they want to do. That's their business. Other civil rights leaders, for various reasons, refuse or can't take a stand or have to go along with the administration. That's their business. But I must say tonight that I know that justice is indivisible. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. With the war, I, I think the moral force of Dr. King's opposition 
had to be a, an enormous body blow to the president. That's when I first observed him not meeting with Dr. King. And I don't think Dr. King came into the White House many times after that. He went from being someone whom Lyndon Johnson had brought to the White House on his way back from winning the Nobel Prize to someone, once he gave his speech, um, attacking the war in 67, and you'll have to pardon the language, Johnson referred to as a nigger preacher. I want to make it very clear that I'm going to continue with all of my might, with all of my energy, and with all of my action to oppose that abominable, evil, unjust war in Vietnam. King begins to see that what was happening in Vietnam was also connected with, with poverty and connected with racism and classism. And that's when he begins to think about another march. And this march is going to be a march to transform the economic situation of people in this country. Stokely's been out of touch with them. These people are still allied to Stokely. When you bring them to Washington, he's going to be right there. Listen, I want this movement to work. Wait, wait a minute, And I don't want, I want to cut down the, the possibilities of outside education. The last ferocious debate within King's inner circle was over whether to make a, try to build a whole movement out of the Riverside speech against the war or do the Poor People's Campaign. If Dr. King you know, is serious in what he's projecting. It would seem to me that he has to be able to, to rally these forces to really have what you call a united black movement around the country, to include those guys who are willing to die by, by shooting at the, at the, uh, you know, the cat on the, on, this, on, the, on the rooftop. Now, I know nonviolence will work. I know it will work. It works in, in personal relationships. It works in marriage. It works with children. And it works with Bull Connors. Yes, yes, and it sir. works with Jim Clark. Yes, yes, and it can work in Washington. Yes, yes. The Poor People's Campaign ultimately won Dr. King's allegiance because even though he didn't expect it to be embraced at the time, it was the right call. It was the next headlight. It was saying, you know, we have people in this country who, no matter what laws are passed, are still going to be so damaged and so excluded and so invisible that the richest country in the world needs to take special steps. We have to do it. For our own sense of dignity, our own self-respect, our own determination. I was home this particular day, January 15th. They were at the church planning a, a march. And they called me and said, you know, we're concerned about Doc. Uh, and said, we haven't seen his laughter in a long time. And we need to see that old spark again. And we think you can help us get that spark back. So will you come over to